South African National Rally Championship traditionally opens with a Tour Natal and this year is no different. So with five more stages to go, it was everything to play for. Enzo, you've done all the stages for today once, attacking them again this afternoon. What are you doing? What's your plan? We, we're pushing hard and uh, staying safe. Uh, engine's gone a little bit down, probably 5%, and we can't fix it yet. So uh, I think we, we're putting up a good fight and making sure that uh, we keep some pressure on those forwards. After yesterday, Charles, things couldn't have got much worse today. Yeah, we, we had a terrible day yesterday and uh, almost fell out of the rally. Um, but uh, today it's, it's going okay, and we, we're just trying to keep it on the road, get some mileage done, and... Um, see if we can get close to the top 10 but uh, we're slowly making our way towards that. Leroy it looks like you decided to take a bit of a bushwalk there what's happened? I, um, we came through uh, I think it was a hip and uh, left and uh, I was a bit too far in and I hit a, a rock with a left wheel um, we carried on from there and I thought you know the serine was a bit out but then the, the, the aluminium arm um, broke so Look, a bit unlucky. We stopped and we repaired it. Now I think we're going to just carry on and just get some seat time for the rest of the rally. Stage 10, a repeat of the day's first stage. So it's Montevideo, two over 13.16 kilometers back to the landing strip, back to the subways, the sugarcane and the rough and rocky patches. On the road, our rally leader, Rob, uh, Mark Rear, still kicking up the dust. He's trying to uh, maintain that lead of his. Not easy, of course, because the uh, surface now is starting to degrade. And caution, short left seven, right six, no cut. Caution, left seven, right eight over, bad bump, bad bump. 60 tight over Kings. Key, right eight, left six down. Rough, through clearing, 70 minutes. He's on board shots, we can clearly see Fekin and Aries. I mean, the road has been deteriorating with the rest of the field going through it earlier on in the day. It's treacherous, it's demanding, and deserves complete commitment. Rodenbach also showing complete commitment there. He's absolutely flying. He has got the bit between the teeth now. He knows that he can actually do pretty well on this rally if he can close that gap. Johnny Gemmel and Drew Sturrock from Team Castrol still chasing down and need to improve on this sector. They certainly do. They lost from time and only finished ninth, but this is a crew that is completely committed. Jan Habich has got the hammer down. He wants to improve on his position at the moment. Into long left two. Into right one over crest, left one. Right one over crest, left one. 50. Long left six titans. Long left six titans. Into clearing and short left two. Crest is right eight. Crest is right eight. That certainly looked like a great run. Greg Godrich, along with uh, Shaw Wilkin in the Basil Reed car, and they also on a run. They've got to make up some positions, as does uh, John Williams, because he's involved in that uh, nice little battle at the back end of the top ten. On board we go now, and whoa! You can just physically almost feel the yumps, <laughs> the car bottoming out, as uh, Williams tries to not uh, make a major mistake here. JP Danza and Carolyn Swan. Just uh, round about the top 10 at this point, and on board we go with him. Stage 11, a repeat of the morning, stage 7. So we've got sugarcane, hairpins, and some subways. So the battles at the front and in the midfield ne developing nicely in the crowd enjoying the rally actions we will go back on board with Fekin and Aris. To right five and left four tightens to six into tunnel. Small crest slight right over bumpy. Oh, oh that will damage the uh, right rear suspension certainly. That little bump at the back there. You could hear from Aris's reaction that was quite a bump there. And it's also obviously going to cost him some time. And in fact, on this stage, Fekin only goes 10th fastest, and that will also cost him some overall positions. Pretty rough rally for them so far. Uh, we, as we went into the um, bridge underneath the highway, we uh, hit the outside. So uh, we lost all power steering for about 20 k's. So not good. But it was my fault. So. 
Well, that's refreshing. Uh, an admission of his own fault by a driver in motorsport. As we go to Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson, and they are really pushing it very hard. They'd like to at least finish on the podium and setting the fourth fastest time in the stage. Glad we got through that clean, and uh, we, we, we're losing power in the car, but uh, it's a good time compared to Cronio because he's carrying a bigger problem than we are, so we're happy. Well, this is the problem that he alluded to. Mark Cronier, who's been the rally leader for 10 stages, is in trouble. What a disappointment this is going to be for him. This is so typical of rallying. You can never be sure until the end of the event. But the big blow there for Mark Cronier and his chances of a victory. That is Conrad Rotenbach's opportunity of moving up into the lead now. Uh, this is exactly what he would have been uh, hoping for. In fact, probably what everybody else has been hoping for, to uh, at least move up one position. But Conrad Rosenbach now well placed to take his first victory of the season. That is, if Jan Havich has nothing to offer, because he has certainly got the foot down. Havich has won the last stage and he is on his home turf, so he... <laughs> Very long right six. 80. Bump into a leg six. There's Cronier limping with a damaged rear suspension. He will now retire, there's no doubt. A man on a fly, Charles Wilkin in the Basel Reed for the Fiesta. Still making up positions after the problems that they suffered yesterday. And uh, this car seemingly now running problem free as Wilkin has the foot down. And in fact, he wins this stage. First victory of this event for this pairing. Yeah, we're just trying to hang in there. Um, we actually, uh, the only thing that can help us now is if someone falls out off, you know, in front of us. So we stuck in 11th, came back from 25th, and now that's where we're going to stop, I think. Well, they might as well chase down these guys. It's uh, John Williams and Kubis Frey in the second Cecil Ford uh, Fiesta. All, all of them involved in that battle just around the top ten. So we go to JP Damso and Carolyn Swan. Also right there, holding steady inside the top ten. So after the demise of Mark Cronier, Conrad Rotenbach moves into the lead ahead of Jan Habich and Enzo Kuhn. Mark Renier limping into his service area and the Ford team jumping into action as he explains exactly what happened. Mark, you've lost a bit of time. What's happened there? Yeah, unfortunately, um, that stage we we to jump and it nosed the car. Um, nothing too bad, but unfortunately we, we're still learning the car, so we hit the front of the radiator and it's basically game over. What a diner. This is rallying. This is rallying. It's, you can be at the absolute pinnacle and, and be dropped in seconds. It's just, this is a very, very cool sport and that's just how it is. You were fighting with Mark, but now you've got Jan Habeck right behind you. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately uh, Mark had a bit of a problem. Uh, I think he hit a bump, but it was really, really rough in those last two. It's much worse than we anticipated. You know, the, these stages are usually really good, but it was really rough. So it's a battle to keep the car in, in a good nick and then still carry on. But uh, yeah, Mark had a problem, so he's he's dropped down, but uh, Habeck's right on our tail. So it's, I think in the last stage, we were point one of a second difference, and there's, I think, 10 seconds in it. So uh, there's still anything can happen. Well, amongst all the carnage that's going on throughout the entire day, an epic battle continues between 7, 8 and 9. Nicholas, three-way battle going here. Yeah, we've got a big boss from the deck car behind me chasing me. And uh, those blind crests have become over, I just know he's hitting those flats, because that's the way they did it in the deck car, as you see on TV. But um, there's some talent there behind me, and uh, John has just got ahead of me. We had a spin on the last stage, just before a tunnel. Lost about 10 seconds, maybe. John, real battle developing, but you seem to be at the head of the pack. Yeah, no, it's going better this afternoon. Obviously, a uh, new car and been out of the rally scene for a year and a half, so uh, just finding my way. But, um, yeah, no, look, this afternoon's gone really well and enjoying the rally. And, you know, thanks to Cecil for the support and, you know, our whole crew's been uh, really getting into it. Obviously, you know, like I said, two new cars, so a lot of learning to be done. Stage 12, a repeat of the morning stage 8, so it's Esperanza 2 over 13.03 kilometers. So lots of fast sugarcane running ahead of us on this stage. And a huge battle, of course, up front amongst the top five. 
as Fekin and Aris put the foot down. They want to get past the Danzo into that fourth position. That's their first chance. 150. Do not miss deceptive blind turn off left seven. Right three, 70 down, danger. Right four over bridge, narrow. Care left two, up over bad bump. Right five, stay left, care left eight. Enzo Kerber is third overall and seemingly in a lot of problems, has some power problems. Will he be able to hold on to a podium position? Man under pressure is Conrad Rotenbach. He knows he's got Jan Habich that's going to breathe down his neck. He's got to hold on to his lead at all costs. The stage uh, distance now also starting to run out. Just about 25 k's to go. Good rally stage time for him there. It's really hard with the rhythm to know what to do in that, especially when the guy's behind you, but uh, it didn't feel that great in there, so we might have to get a move on in the next one. We'll see what Abek does. Team Castrol, Johnny Gemmel and Drew Sturrock, and, uh, well, currently 10th, and uh, will need to improve. Hasn't had the greatest time in this stage. This is a dangerous man. It's Jan Habich on a charge. He knows it's a reachable goal to get to the lead, and he has got the hammer down. He's using each and every inch of the road, as you can see, and there's lots of uh, spectators who are going to cheer for him and will be, whoa, just going a little bit wide. They must be careful not to overstep the mark and uh, overstep the uh, edge. And he takes the stage when Jan Habich now leads by 0.3 of a second. What I can probably describe as a bit busy, but it's a good stage. Got a nice flow to it, carried the speed all the time. Quite happy. Camille de Villiers and Ralph Pitchford in that uh, three way battle for sixth position, currently lying in eighth place overall, but still within striking distance and breathing down their necks. Sean Wilkin, just outside the top ten. Does he have enough time to break the top ten or possibly even the top nine or eight? JB Damsar will lose five seconds and will also lose fourth place to Hagen Fecken in this stage. Nick Ryan, a solid performance in this stage, taking some time off the likes of John Williams and Geniel de Villiers, so that should cement his seventh place overall. And currently in ninth position, it looks fairly safe as well. Jarpi Fenika and Dave Levkovic. Hopefully they can hold on to that place inside the top ten. Stage 13, 11.1 k's, last gravel stage of the day, lots of sugarcane and lots of changes in the surface. The big question is, who is going to come out on top? Will it be this man, Conrad Rotenbach, or is it going to be the man who chases him down and currently leads him by a point three of a second, Jan Habich? We tried really well, uh, so I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Now. Really tight into the race. Yeah, yeah, it, was, uh, it, felt, it felt good, so we just have to wait and see what Yanni can do. Real no-biting stuff. This is Gemmel, obviously still on a shakedown run, really, because they're inside the top ten and they're just trying to sort this guy out. Here's the man, it's Jan Habich. He's chasing down the uh, rally win. He's got a lead of 0.3 of a second. Can he hold on to that in the stage? Once again, on board we go with uh, Habich and uh, Paisley, and once again, he is trying to his very best. He wants to open up that gap. After this, there's only a one-kilometer far stage to go, and, oh, he's lost it. 7.7 .7 seconds slower than Rotenbach. That will be a big disappointment. You know, we thought he had enough pace, but obviously, uh, maybe we're a bit too careful. Charles Wilkin in the Ford Fiesta is uh, trying to hold on to 11th. Uh, the fourth fastest in the stage is trying to close in on Johnny Gemmel for 10th position. Nick Ryan involved in that little battle for 6th position. Will he come out on top or will it be John Williams? We'll have to wait to see until the end of the stage. In a battle amongst the 1600cc cars, it's Ashley Haig-Smith and Hilton Orfrey in their Ford Fiesta who came out on top and in a very creditable 12th position overall as well. About 40 seconds further back, second in the S1600 class, Chad Koradi and Kez Naidu in their Toyota Aorus. And in third place, the Snyder's bearing, it's Christoph and Celeste in their little Volkswagen Polo. And you can see much more of the action in the junior categories in our special junior championship coverage. And winning the S1400 class, Megan Verlaak and Lorraine Duplessis in the factory-backed BP Ultimate Volkswagen Vivo. 
So a big crowd awaits at the Arbor Crossing. Overall, which is 900 meter tarmac town stage in Imams and Tony remaining. The order is Rated Bud, Havoc, Kun, Fekin, Damso, Ryan Williams, De Villiers, Yapi Bunny Keg, and Gemmel. What next? Seconds from Habich, followed by Keen, Fekin, and Damso. And in that battle for sixth, it was Nicholas Ryan who came out on top. Fantastic win there. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. It was uh, it was really great. You know, it's uh, our first time competing in South Africa, so it's, uh, it was a new experience for Nico, I'm sure, but it was uh, he did a fantastic job, so it was a great result. And Nicholas, how did you find those stages? Uh, the stages are very nice, a very beautiful stage, fast part, twisty part, you find everything in a stage. And uh, it's a very good experience for me. A very, good, uh, very difficult to make the notes on the DVD and everything. So uh, very, uh, very happy. So the first podium of the 2011 season sees Conrad Rotenbach from Zimbabwe take it over three former champions, Habich, Kim, and Sekhar. Congratulations, guys! A very hard fought battle, but Conrad beat you out in the end. Yeah, it was uh, a bit unfortunate, but you know I think he drove well for the whole event. And uh, yeah, I think he had a very good run, and well done to him. Is it good to see the young blood coming through? <laughs> well, it depends on which side of the car you are. But uh, no, it's good. You know, the youngsters uh, should be there, and uh, I think he's done a, he did a real good job. Great stuff. And what was this rally like for the navigator? Um, this event, you're always uh, busy. The ride conditions is very tricky. So you need to up your game a bit to keep your driver satisfied. So. That brings us to the end of day two of the Total Tour in Natal. Conrad Rotenbach managed to beat off Jan Havik in a very close battle. Join us again next week, guys, as we check out the Junior Championship.